The other things associated with algebra are inequalities, interval and absolute values, and summation symbols and its rules. For inequalities, as you may easily learn, that the four implication statements here are the properties of inequalities. All four properties remain valid when each bigger sign is replaced by bigger or equal sign, and each smaller sign by smaller or equal sign. One thing that you cannot forget is that whenever the two sides of an inequality are multiplied by a positive number, the direction of the inequality is preserved or unchanged. On the other hand, if the two sides of an inequality are multiplied by a negative number, the direction of the inequality is reversed, such as this. Multiplying both sides by minus 1 result now in 2x squared plus x is less than minus 4. As for intervals, the table and the number line illustration here should be clear for all of you. A is the example of the closed intervals. The value of x is from minus 4 to minus 2. All the signs for the closed interval have equal sign. B is the half open interval. The value of y is closed at 0 but open at 1 or it is less than 1. And C is the example of open interval whose value of z is between 2 and 5. All the signs for the open interval have no equal sign. Absolute value is not difficult to comprehend either. The idea is just that if you are talking about a single number, then the absolute value of any number must be positive. It means that if the number, suppose A, is positive, then the absolute value is just A itself, a positive number. On the other hand, if A, if a is a negative, then to find the absolute value of A, a must be multiplied by minus 1 so that the absolute value turns out to be positive. What now if we're trying to find absolute value of an interval such as uh, absolute value of A bigger than 10 or the absolute value of A uh, smaller than 10. We just need to find the interval if A is bigger than or equal 0 and if A is negative or less than 0. Then, for absolute value of a bigger than 10, we get the interval is a bigger than 10 and a is uh, smaller than minus 10. <coughs> using, the same, uh, using the same procedures, we will have this for uh, absolute value of a smaller than 10. So the absolute value of a smaller than 10 is the interval a between minus 10 and 10. Lastly, about the summation symbol sigma. It helps us write summation of different series of natural numbers more comfortably. See the first illustration here. When there are 6n that we would like to add, the notation of n1 plus n2 plus n3 up until n6 can be replaced by this sigma. Here the number is replaced by i, which is numbers from 1 to 6, representing number of the n. The second example is just similar. The only difference is that number of n is now as many as the small caps n. <clears throat> In the third example, the equation looks more complicated, but still, to read the sigma, we just need to continually add this expression with i from i equals 1 up until i equals n. The following properties of the summation notations are helpful when manipulating sums. These properties are known respectively as additivity and homogeneity. With additivity property, summation of the two variables a and b, whose quantities are the same from 1 to n, can be conducted using one summation sign or using separated summation sign. The homogeneity property states that the constant factor C can be moved outside the summation sign. And if uh, 
AI happens to equals 1 for all I, then the summation is just the multiplications of the constant with number of A, which is N here. Okay, so that's all from me. Uh, thank you for the attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.